All right, fellas, you know what time it is. It's a new LOR expansion. There's a lot of new stuff. We got Kane, we got Orn, we got a ton of new Darken, we got Master Yi and Jax looking great, and we even got Nora with some new Yordles. Lots of great stuff. Not only that, the last video we put out of top 10 champions that are in LOR that should be in League did really well. You guys seem to really like that one. So I thought, hey, Legend of Terror got like, what, 5 billion cards? There's gotta be more characters in here that should be champions, right? And I think I've compiled a list of ones that I'd like to see. And we have honorable mentions, of course. And there's, there's Meduli. Scythria's number one, though. Scythria was on the last list. The list from last time was... Honorable mentions were Karina, Jack the Winner, Rasa, Ava, Ladros, and then going from order from top 10 to 1 was Captain Farron, Draclone Inquisitor, Danny, Mage Seeker, Riptide Rex, Ravoon, the Masked Mother, Abakai, Scythria, and number 1 was Professor Von Yip, but actually was ch but you know, that doesn't bite. But I also mentioned some other characters in there. Like I mentioned Kahiri, I mentioned Scar Mother Vrina. So any character that I mentioned explicitly in the last video is not gonna be on this list. So don't be expecting a Kahiri here. We're going off new stuff that we haven't seen yet. Granted, not all of these characters on this list are from the new expansion. There are some for sure, but there's still a lot of oldies on here. And I think we'll be a nice refresher for everyone because there's a lot of characters throughout all of LOR's history. Chip, yes, Chip, Chip is the god. And you can see on screen right now, we can start off with uh, Maduli. What is Maduli? I don't fucking know. He's awesome though. Look at him. He's fucking cool. <laughs> I mean, he's something to do with Bard, some kind of creature crafted from Bard or something like how Bird is, but I don't know what he is. Regardless, not all of these are gonna be stuff like Maduli where they're just like, he looks cool, should be a champion. I think that's a bit too surface level, although some of these picks are like that. I think LOR just has so many champions that are really neat story-wise and design-wise that I just wanna see how they'd function in a League of Legends environment, you know? Like in the last one, we had stuff like a Bakai, right? Like I want a Bakai in there just for story reasons. Bakai are fucking awesome. So that's what we're gonna go off of that now. We've seen Maduli, and, you know, as usual, we have five honorable mentions, so we'll move on to our fourth, I can math, our second honorable mention, <laughs> which you guys have seen, I talk about him a lot, the fucking Arsenal, baby. <laughs> Arnie Biggs, as I like to call him. What a ghoul guy, you know? I, he's, not only is he great, he's a fun guy, but Ziggs is our only other bomb character in the game, and Biggs looks absolutely nothing like him, so it wouldn't feel repetitive, you know? And we don't have a Yordle that looks like him at all. Like, do we have any big, buff, burly Yordles? I don't think so. So he'd be a nice, unique twist. And plus, I just want to see more of him. I think he's great. All right, next up uh, for honorable mentions, this one is not a specific one, but it's a character that I would like to see explored. Because I think the concept is really neat. And it's from a region that's very underrepresented. And that is a Clockling or Clock Hand, like one of the Akathian automatons. These things are fucking sick. These things are really cool and a lot of history behind them. I think it wouldn't be as good without a zillion ASU or VGU first. I think if you had them together, it'd be cool. I think if you just put in an Akathian Automaton before you updated Zillion, it would be a little bit weird, but once Zillion looks more like how he does actually, like in LOR, then it would be great. You have some cool lore connections. It could be even an Automaton trying to gain sentience, you know? Yeah, we only have two Akathian champions. Yeah, Zillion and Jax are the only two Akathian champions, and those guys came out 5,000. BC. So, they can have Zonius passive. I mean, I'm looking at this and like, you could do like one of the small clocklings for sure. I prefer like one of the bigger automatons. Not even like this, but you could do like the Sanctum Preservator, I think is what they're called. You could even be a. S oh, okay. What if. <laughs> okay, hear me out. You could have the clockling automaton in some way make it an ADC. In some way. Or even just a bot lane champion. You could have it be one of those uh, AP bot laners, you know? So you can have Zillion and the Automaton together. So he's like, yes, I will help the Automaton. I'll help it do stuff. All right, this next one, admittedly, is purely just because I think this character is funny. Uh, they could make him have a funny move set. I don't know how you would. Uh, I just really like him. He might be a little bit redundant because we already have a character that's kind of like him in League. I'm talking about a bit of an older champion. This character came out, uh, I think it was the start of this year, right? Something like that. I'm talking about... <laughs> Chief Nako Talk, baby. <laughs> we don't have a witch doctor in League. Give me a witch doctor. So I don't have to pick out a dying hole? No, Timo. I give you Chief Nako Talk. He's, like, it's, he's great. I love this guy. Listen to his voice lines once and you'll fall in love with him immediately. Nako Talk, Joe. Narb. <laughs> 
The only thing I, I'm thinking of is like he might be too similar to Nar because Nar is already our prehistoric Yordle, but he looks different enough from Nar, right? I feel like he looks different enough that you could make him convincingly different. I don't know if it's enough, but I just like the guy and I want to see more of him. Nar kind of had an unfortunate ending in LOR, right? Where like the, his whole transform package wasn't even a part of his actual good combos, you know? So you, Chief Nakutak never saw any play, which is really <laughs> sad because I, I like him a lot. He could be a support. He could be the witch. Oh, that'd be sick! Like a witch doctor support. He's like making potions and shit for his ADC. If you get like Lulu transforming people, yeah, kinda, yeah. It might end up being Lulu 2.0, which that kind of sucks. And our final honorable mention, I'm just gonna put this here because I think this is gonna be a thing people would have said, which is fine. Personally, Nora. I think Nora should stay as an LOR exclusive champion. That's my personal opinion, because I like Nora a lot. Nora's great, but what's Nora gonna do in combat? Realistically, what is she gonna do? I mean, she could maybe be a support and make portals for you, maybe, but I think one thing that I hope LOR does is take champions that, or take characters anyway, in the lore that realistically couldn't be champions and give them spotlight in LOR, you know? Same as Bard, yeah, it might be too similar to Bard. So, it, like, if they made Ladros, or if they made Professor Von Yip a champion in uh, LOR, that'd be cool, but that would be a little, like, I mean, but you could have made Von Yip a champion, you know? Whereas Nora, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't think you could make Nora a really compelling champion in League, so it's nice that to make her a champion here. That's the same thing with something like a bunch of people said that Silco is, like, the perfect one. If you want to take a character from Arcane, make Sevika the champion in League, and Silco the champion in LOR. That's my thoughts on that matter. All right, now we're done with honorable mentions and now we're on to the actual top 10. And our first one is an old one. In fact, they've been there since the beginning of LOR. And I think we only have, I believe, one champion in the game that's actually part of this. I guess Alistar counted, but Draven is the only Reckoner in the game. And I think if we're gonna get a Reckoner, I don't know how the fuck you'd make this work. Kato the Arm and Shiraza. It's going to be a catastrophe! <laughs> we spoke about this. You, you have them together. Have them do it. Because these guys are a fucking power couple. I love these guys. <laughs> Something about like the big lunk head and Shiraz like trying to keep it on track. Oh, they're great. I, you'd have to have them work together though. You can't have just one. Like you can't put just Kato. You can't put just Shiraza. Like you have to have them both. I don't imagine Shiraza would be, it'd be weird because you could have them both like running side by side with each other or something. It'd be a very weird and unconventional champion because you'd have two in one in that aspect, but that'd be cool. Kato yeets Shiraza. I mean, he does that. That's like one of their moves is that he literally yeets her. You you could make it like Kate, like Zaya Rakan, where they're two separate champions, but I think you have a potential to make a more interesting character if it was like the two in one. Throwing Shirazu could be an auto attack. Uh, Kato's uh, fucking, <laughs> he's got bricks for brains. All right. Moving on to number two. Now this one, I'm kind of breaking my rule about not mentioning because they technically appeared in last video. I didn't mention them explicitly. I can still put them in here because they're fucking sick. And they are, they are a more recent addition. I'm talking about the maker. The artist, the stage, the actor, the grave. What is going on here? This would be a nightmare to animate. You know, I, I feel like the animators took one look at this character and shit themselves. <laughs> Just, no, oh god, god. Oh, no, please. god oh, no. please no oh no oh god no. no yeah you could even have her be the support but she could be like the Jin support because she's the one who supplies Jin his weapons or a good chunk of his weapons anyway but like i want to know what's going on with her and it's, yeah it's a really really cool design i really like and you know we add one oh. another older woman to the game always a good thing to have animators <laughs> i'm in danger how many arms is that well she's got four robot arms and then a shit ton of spectral arms so you imagine she has the four robot arms out all the time and then she has extendable extra extra spectral arms i want lore yes lore good so and she's got i don't even know what she could do but like i think that's kind of the cool thing is she, there's like mystery behind her <laughs> looks like a tabletop dinner anyway i like the maker she's very cool all right, next one is similar to one we saw in our previous list but in a different kind of way because you guys remember the Mask Mother? Mask Mother's cool. She basically made Kindred. She made all these other Grim Reaper-esque characters. There's one character, though, we don't know much about, except for the fact that he is the Grim Reaper of the Grim Reapers, and that's the Aether Fiend. Be remembered no more. The death and the end. 
You know something means business when it's the Grim Reaper for the Grim Reapers. Like, that's, that's badass. Oh my god. It's just, because there's the fading icon, right? So, for the fellows who don't know about Kindred, you guys can't even see him. There he is, there's fading icon. He's hiding from the Aether Fiend. So, for the fellows who don't know, uh, Kindred is not technically the only Grim Reaper of Runeterra. There are tons of Grim Reapers because Kindred is just a spirit. Same as Janna, right? They're just spirits. And the way that spirits work, is they become more powerful the more people believe in them, right? So, for example, there is a Grim Reaper for Targon that more people believe in. It's like a goat-looking thing, and that's more prevalent in Targon because more people in Targon believe there. Kindred is believed almost worldwide in Runeterra, so that's why they are the most powerful. Fading Icon was very likely the Grim Reaper spirit of the Shadow Isles, or when it was the Blessed Isles. So now that nobody believes in him anymore because everyone on the Shadow Isles is dead, the Aether Fiend comes for them. Because there's like, you have no purpose, spirit. Nobody believes in you. Be gone, fuck! You have no power. So he's basically the Grim Reaper for spirits, as far as I'm aware. And that's fucking cool. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a new card from the new expansion. And I had quite a few to choose from because I think we can all agree that LOR does a lot of good stuff redeeming old champions. And I was gonna put June here, but June has a bit of a higher function to serve and June is dead. <laughs> so, but I did want to include a person from the new Wuju order. And I could have put Ting. I could have put the, the new Shimon we got. Um, But Ting's a piece of shit. There's some charming levels of arrogance. You can have arrogance be funny. You can have it with Ezreal or you can have it with Aesol, but Ting is, Ting's Kiana. He's Kiana too. He's so annoying. So I wanted to choose someone and then I thought, wait a minute, there's one that has a great connection to an old character, the Disciple of Doran. In each hammer's blow, his spirit lives on. Not only do we get connections to Doran, but we get the fucking bird. Give me the bird. It's great. Love these guys. They're so nice. Yeah, and Ting bullies June. Yeah, Ting's an asshole. Give me the combo. Give me the bird and give me the Disciple of Doran. And yeah, it's a Yordle, yeah. That's why she knows who Doran is, because she would have been alive long enough to see him. Is she voiced by Lily Peach? She does sound similar, but I, I don't think so. The whole thing with Yi's helmet has basically been retconned into this, is that they're based off the birds. Um, because their helmets, the gems, allow them to see into the spirit world. They can't interact with the spirit world in the same way that Shen can. He can, like, harm things in the spirit world with the, the spirit blade. But the theory is that the, these birds are able to see into the spirit realm, so they use some similar fashion for their goggles to be able to see into the spirit realm like the birds do. And I, I like these two. I think they're really neat. All right, next one. This one I put on this list just because they're fucking hilarious and it'd be really funny. I'm talking about the goddamn combat cook, baby. Fighting food and cooking evil. No, uh, switch those. It's just fucking great. I love this guy. Because he was in War Chefs and like, oh, this guy's kind of funny. But then you put him in there. I need to find, hold on. I'm going to find the Jack's voice line. Did I see you using my lamp to stir the pot last night? Sorry, all the spoons were dirty. <laughs> It's so good. Also, how is that shirt stain free, by the way? That is a white shirt and you are swinging pots of stew around. What is that shirt made? Is that stain free shirt or something? How is that even possible? He's a good cook, that's why. Also, this guy. <laughs> oh. That's either the face of someone who's having way too much fun or a serial killer. He does have the pan of pain. This is true. He does. He is currently holding the pan of pain. But yeah, combat cook. I just put him in here just because I like him a lot. And I think the interactions he has with Jax are just really funny. I think the whole thing with Jax just traveling across from Terra, basically assembling a, a Garns of the Galaxy crew. Like, that's just funny. You know, that, that, that seems like something Jax would do. It's good. I like it a lot. The next one, I'm mad at myself that I didn't put them in the last list because I completely forgot about them. I don't know how, because I love this guy. You guys know him, he's been in like 3,000 cards at this point. I'm talking about Shelly, baby. Fleet Admiral Shelly, reporting for duty. It's the lead. Look at the boy. Yeah, Shelly's great. And you could have Shelly with either uh, any of his friends. You know, it could. It doesn't have to be just Shelly by himself. You know you've done something good if even Nautilus likes you. Like, come on. I like them. And we need more Bilgewater champions, you know? Bilgewater is like a very, is a region, I think it's one of the regions with like the least amount of champions. So a new Bilgewater, in, like a lighthearted Bilgewater champion, I, I wouldn't mind that. We have enough like serious pirate characters. I like Neela. I don't count her as a Bilgewater champion. That's like saying that Olaf is a Bilgewater champion. Like, yeah, sure. You were in Bilgewater for a while. Like, 
That's not where you're from. All right, this one. Am I cheating on this? Yeah, maybe. Um, it's a Bukai again. However, this one, Forsaken Bukai, this guy has connections to Rost. He was Rost's friend. Now, what would be cooler than a Bukai champion? A Bukai champion with existing connections to already existing champions in the game, and you can have a rivalry between him and Kane and Rost. Because he's a cultist, right? So he's part of uh, the Shadow Cult, right? And we knew Dark. Well, he is, he's a he's a Bukai. He's, a, he's like a, an ascendant that didn't work out. And the idea that we got from the lore is that he's basically became horribly jealous jealous and biteful of Rost because Rost became a proper ascendant. Well, he became a Bakai. Like, how cool would this be if he's like, like he knows the true power of Rost and he doesn't want Rost to come back. So he, as a part of the cult, is doing his best to push Kane towards overpowering Rost. Like, I think that'd be kind of cool. Like, he wants to do everything in his power to make sure Rost does not come back. I think that'd be kind of cool. It might be a bit redundant because he is a rat, but I think he has enough differences about him compared to Twitch. But the, the rat thing might be like why people are like, nah, nah, don't put him in. We already have, we already have Twitch. He's got a spear or something. So I imagine he'd be like a top lane fighter. He'd be very different from, uh, or he'd be a jungler even. Regardless, I like him. Forsaken Bakai, very cool. I uh, still want a Bakai champion. Still one of my most wanted. All right, next one. I don't think we've had a champion like this in a while. I guess Neela, kind of. You know, I'm always down for another demon. I'm talking about about the one that Pantheon fights in his cards. I'm talking about Camphor the Doubt. Crack of broken hearts. Oh my, why, what the fuck is that? That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't she dead? She's a demon. And we don't even know if she died actually. Lore's like, she's fucking cool. I'll never understand why Camphor has like a unique animation when she plays, like a, a fully like unique, like let me, let me find a, uh, Pantheon's trailer. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. When you play Cam 4, look at this. Wait. It's like a pseudo level up animation. What the hell? If we're just like a, a she was a 5 4, dude. She used to be a 5 4. Like Man, so I, from what I, I, she's called Cam for the doubt, so I'd imagine she feeds off the fear of doubt, right? Which is, if you think about it, a really cool thing for a demon to be on Targon, because that's what people are trying to do, right? Is they're trying to climb the mountain to prove that they're good enough, but she feeds off that doubt of people. I imagine like a lot of people fail to climb the mountain and die on the mountain because Cam for feeds off of and increases their doubt. The anxiety monster, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's not, he's not one of the primal 10, but neither is Evelyn or Tom Kench, you know? But yeah, she's really cool. Also, a very clearly monsterish character that is still female. We barely have any of those, right? We have Anavia and we have Rek'Sai. That's it. So, Cam 4, very awesome. I, I always love it when they subvert expectations like that because always in fiction, if you see a big monstery character like this, you always assume it's male right off the bat. So, I, I love it when they do stuff like that. All right, this one's going to be a bit of a weird one because this one seems kind of out of nowhere, but it's the lore implications. Number two is the lost soul. Yeah! <laughs> and you might think that's kind of weird. A random unit from the Grey Legion. Why is that neat? So for those who don't know what the Grey Legion is, it's Noxus basically mass producing scions, making a zombie army, basically. So specific soldiers go through a transformation to turn them into zombie warriors that if they fall in battle, they just take a Dr. S. Langer on the battlefield and revive them. Now, why I chose the Lost Soul specifically is because there's a lot of cool Grey Legion characters. What do you guys notice about the Lost Soul's getup? Anything? Does it look like it, he doesn't belong from Noxus almost? Almost like his outfit belongs to another region as if? Ninja, Ionia. So you guys remember how Noxus weaponized children Children against Ionia. Imagine being kidnapped from your land, made to fight your own people, and then turned into a zombie warrior for all a turn. That's fucked up. <laughs> like that. That is fucked up. 
Yeah, so he has more lore implications than any of the other Grey Legion and would have potential for a much better story than I think any of the other Grey Legion members. They're all cool. Like, the other Grey Legion members are cool, but this one is like, if you want to point to like, like, Noxus aren't like the villains, but if you want to say like, how bad can Noxus get? There you go. That's how bad Noxus can get. That That is like, that's the peak. There you go. Yeah, it's like, it went so, it's like, oh my God. But yeah, so I, that's why I chose the Lost Soul specifically. And I think you guys might agree a bit that like after here, that's like, man, Man. Yeesh. But it's interesting, right? And again, champions with ties to multiple regions is always cool. And you could have him be like he's trying to remember where he's from. And it doesn't even have to be specifically this lost soul. It, it could be another Ionian kid turned to a zombie like this. And Scion came out in 2014. So I think adding a new Grey Legion soldier would be more than welcome. Okay, take one guess who, who number one is. Come on, like, who who is it? Who is it? Come on, came out this expansion. Guess who? Guess who? Who is it? I'm proud of you all saying Chip, this is good. But Chip did not come out this expansion. And I talked about Chip on the last list. So unfortunately, I cannot put Chip at number one twice. I, I would, if I could, Chip would be number one through ten on every list, regardless. It, it could be top ten countries, and it would still be Chip number one through ten. But the obvious choice here for number one is Zulani. Like, it's not, it, like, come on. Hope is a poisonous draft, but I bring life. Obviously, it's fucking Zulani. You know you've done something great if the other Darken fear you. If the other Darken had to unite together to stop you, you know you've done something. Like, you know she means business. Is she a baddie, though? I mean, she's a bloodbender. Like, she literally fucking bloodbend other Darken to do things for her. Because she was a healer when she was an Ascendant. Only problem is the face. And I was, I was going to say that. I think, so this design for Zulani, I'm not overly a fan of it. I think it's too much Jun. Like, if you guys don't know, like, Jun fucking died. She picked up Zulani's weapons and got corrupted pretty much immediately. Because uh, she's far more proficient at corrupting than Rost is. But it, this design, it, it's too much Jun and not enough Zulani, you know? I think, like, the... It's there's not enough dark in here and I was gonna show you guys this because we have concept art for this there There's a uh, there's Zelani there. You know, she looks pretty good pretty pretty good pretty sick Here's a, a fan concept. I found yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take this one, please. Yeah, that sounds that fucking sick I think the thing I like about it the most is the three eyes seems kind of weird, you know, until you realize it's because it's June's Wuju mask. Like, it's the three eyes morphed. Like, it's still incorporated as part of the design, but it's like morphed, like, into part of the Darken. I think that's fucking awesome. And it looks way more Darken than this. I think, again, I like it. It's just, there's too much June, not enough Darken, in my opinion. The Darken had to unite together to stop her. It's like, she's that strong. She's probably the most powerful Darken that there is. Plus, the concept of, like, she was like a healer and then just became a fucking warlord abomination trying to kill everything that's cut kind of, that's scary dude like battle mercy gone wrong <laughs> Uh, yeah. You guys remember in, in the call where Talia and Kaisa are fighting? So I'm fairly certain that the statue there, pretty sure that is supposed to be Zelani. Aatrox cut, I'm guessing. I mean, that would make sense. It looks like a big sword swipe. Yeah, every Darken hates her in the flavor text. Yeah, exactly. If, if I go here. Speak my truth, Tarosh. Peace <laughs> Tarash definitely not doing that on his own volition, because then you get to, uh, you get to Tarash. I must stop you. Hush, my child. Be at peace. Yeah, he's very, very clearly not wanting to be an ally of Zolani, but she has fucking bloodbending powers. So, you know, good luck, Tarash. Combat Cook could probably beat Zolani. This is true. He does have a frying pan and he's got his stain-free... His stain-free shirt is immune to oh, bloodbending. No. You can't bloodbend him because then it would stain the shirt and he can't do that. So, it's impossible. He wins. What are you going to do, Zolani? Nothing. You just bonk over the head with a frying pan and you're done. And Ch Chip can beat them all too. This is this is true. Would you have the Wuju technique as for host? Technically, yeah. Oh my god. Wait. I didn't even consider. Oh my god. A Darken has Wuju. Holy shit. Yeah, because because Rost has shadow magic. Oh jeez. Oh, she's unstoppable. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait. You gave a Darken a set and the ability to bloodborne con bloodbend control people, corrupt them, turn them into pseudo Darkens, and now she has Wuju. Okay, granted, June has voice lines where she says she's not very good at Wuju, right? Yeah. So she's not very um that I think that's why she grabbed the Darken weapon, because she wasn't strong enough to fight Kane because she wasn't she's not proficient at Wuju yet she's still a student yeah so it's implied she's very new to the craft okay because okay so yeah she she has Wuju but like she's not 
proficient in it. But who's to say that, like, Zelani couldn't learn very fast? Having the little bit of knowledge of it, that Zelani couldn't learn it really quickly. I think she could. Regardless, a Darken would have some level of Wuju. That's fucking... That's nightmarish to think of. Yeah, she has way too much... Yeah, she's a, she'd be a way better big bad than, than Aatrox. And, like, I love Aatrox, but, like, realistically... Aatrox is the world, like, you swing your sword around Aatrox, that's kind of it, you know? Like, you, you kill people, that's what Jin does, that's what Zed does, like, that, you know, he's powerful and immortal, sure, but, like, at the end of the day, you swing your sword around, he's huge. But, like, I don't think he even holds a candle to the power level that Zelani potentially has. He can kill a god, that's true, but I, I feel like Zelani is just, like, especially the ability to corrupt people and turn people against each other, like, that's, that's way more terrifying. And especially if she has Wuju as well, why kill a god if you can just control Control them. There you go. I don't know if you guys know how powerful Wuju is. Like, there's a reason Yi has not tried to teach it to anyone else until recently. Because he can kill an entire army single-handedly. And he's just a guy. Like, he's just a dude. And he can do that. So you give that in the hands of a Darken, which are already some of the most powerful beings on Runeterra. Yeah, Darken could already do that. So, uh, so anyway, number one is, uh, is, is Chip. Um...